All right, guys, we're going to um, move into what is going to become your first design exercise. So we're in week four, um, and if you look at the syllabus, there's a project due. Not this week. I mean, I'll collect it next week, but it's going to be pretty simple. I'll walk you through most of it, and I'm not going to just say, like, design this thing. You know, there's more to it than that. Um, but the next segment and probably the last major thing that we're going to learn in module one, which is like the first four weeks of class, is um, designing with, uh, with datums, right, or data. Um, but uh, ba basically using like a datum line or point or something like that that is going to define an overall architectural assembly or system, okay? So to do this, what I'm going to show you is um, doing it with a, a line. Okay, so we're going to create a railing in Grasshopper off of just one line. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's just draw a line. And please be working in feet for this one because it is absolutely critical. Um, line, and I'll draw something from here to here. Okay, that's all we need right now. So. Uh, under params, we're going to have to reference that line, so using curve, set one curve, and we'll pull this here. So I'm going to kind of do this sort of in perspective like this so that you guys understand what's happening. But um, what I want this to represent is kind of like the edge of a slab. So if I loft these and then extrude it back. Right, so that's like a line on that's a line that I drew on the edge of a slab. Um, and this is going to be my datum, right? The datum upon which I build my railing family, right? Um, so there are a couple of things that you need to know about railings. Railings have very specific dimensional requirements um, where you have your slab edge. The railing can be no more than four inches above the slab. Of curb space beneath it, and the guardrail must be 42 inches, I believe, something like that. But we're going to go with 42 inches, and then the handrail that goes that kind of connects back to it needs to be um, 34, I think, to 38 inches. Okay, so um, that's not going to be like too terribly critical for us. I think I'm just going to stick with 36 inches, but. Um, I want you to understand that there are some things that you need to be aware of when designing railings, otherwise they're going to look funny. Um, and those are minimum dimensions. So um, let's start off by trying to define like how we can uh, create our system. So if I'm trying to define the, the railing, uh, like the guardrail plane, right? Um, do you guys sort of envision what I'm referring to? Let me just kind of pull a quick um, picture. Okay, something like this, right? Mm -hmm. It has, this is the guardrail, right? That's the guardrail top, and this is the handrail, and then this is that four inches that I'm referring to at the bottom. Um, so we're gonna do something like this, but in order to define this whole guardrail plane, we need to consider a few things, right? We have, we have this exactly on the edge. Sometimes a railing will um, be built on the platform, right, like this one, or sometimes they'll be built hanging off the edge, like these. So those are all things that you need to design, right? Does, is it going to be something that's attached to the side? Is it going to be mounted on top? Um, so that's going to be part of your design exercise as well. So in order to define that from a datum perspective, um, we would try to create, I mean, ideally, we're going to do this off of one line, right? So we need to now duplicate this curve in Grasshopper to give me my new datum. Um, so if I want it to be on the platform, I'm going to move it so that it is on the platform or offsetting. Actually, let me do offset. Um, I just don't know where it is in the menu. So offset curve is under curve utility. All right, what it's going to ask for is the curve to offset. That's this. Um, and then it's going to ask me for a offset distance. And you can already see that it gave me one that's off of the platform, but I want it to be on the platform. 
So um, I'm going to uh, create a slider that says negative um, 1.0 to 1.0. Whoops, I did this the wrong direction. There we go. So I'm going to put it there, and I can just slide it back so that it's sort of kind of at the edge. It's negative, close to the edge. Negative 1.1 should be fine. 0.1 should be fine, or 0.2 even. That's a couple inches on, so 0.25 would be three inches on, which is kind of normal. Um, okay, so that gives me the line that I'm going to use to create the thing. And so now I've, I've got to go vertical, right? So I can do a few things. I can create two lines that are kind of sitting for the top and bottom of the guardrail, or I can, uh, and then loft them, or I can create one line and extrude it, right? That part's up to you. Because of the fact that I think we, we will want to create you know, some sort of railing element here. I'm actually going to use two lines and then loft it and see you know, if that kind of suits my purposes. Um, so let's go to transform and let's go to Euclidean and let's do move. So I'm going to move this thing. Um, that's the curve that I created. And I'm going to move it in the Z direction. I already know that. So what's cool about that is that um, really with the unit Z, if I know it's going to be vertical, right? Up until now we've used, we've tried to rely on the surface normal because we didn't know what orientation the plane was going to be in. But in this case, it's a, it's a handrail and a guardrail. It will always be vertical. So um, I'm sticking with um, the unit Z and all I have to do is plug in a numerical factor here. So we can do that using a panel or you can do it using sliders. Um, but I think a panel is actually going to be pretty good for this application. So turn off multi-line data because we're going to have two of them. So I'm going to go in and say 4 and 42. And when I plug that into F, we're going to get two lines. Oh, it only gave me the 42? What's up with that? Oh, because that's in feet. All right. So, um, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do here instead of uh, 4 and 42, right, we're now working in inches and feet, right, because I know I want 4 inches and 42 inches, but my units are in feet. The easiest way to do this is to um, just right-click on the input and go to Expression, and you can say um, X divided by 12. Okay, so this is brand new to you guys. So you all need to kind of look up here and see it. Anytime you see this little asterisk on the uh, input side, that's an expression that was added to that node. So um, just be careful of that. And oftentimes what I'm going to do in class, just so it's more clear for you, um, is I'm going to go to math and actually do the math and show the math here. So I'm going to do a division. I'm going to divide this by 12. Okay, so that's going to be the same thing, but it's just it's just going to be visible, so you know what happened. Okay, so now we have um, two curves, and uh, we need to create a surface with it. So I'm going to go to um, surface freeform. I'm going to do loft, and I'm going to drop those two curves on it, and there's my surface. Pretty clever, right? What questions do you have so far? This was surface freeform. And this one was uh, transform Euclidean. Uh, this came from vector vector. And this came from math operators. Okay, cool. So that's how you create your, your datum surface for this assembly.